All right, let's look at how to create basic classes. So first of all, I'm going to create a class, and I use the keyword class, and then I'm going to decide what the class is called. So this is going to be coin. And my coin class has two different sections in it. You have the private section, and you also have the public section. Things that are in the private section cannot be seen outside of the class, and things in the public section are visible on the outside. So let's go ahead and have a name here. So I'll make that a string name. And I'm going to have an int value. All right. Now in the public, I'm going to then have some things called getters and setters. And these are functions that are methods that you can use to get things out of the class or put things into the class. So I'll have a set name method right here. And I want this one to be a void set name. And what I want to do is receive a name as a string. So I will have this right here as n. And I will define this so that what happens is that name becomes equal to whatever n is. Now you can use the same name right here, name and name, but that can be confusing. So let's try that, name and name. When you want to do that and you want to indicate which name is being set to name, you want to use the word this. And what that does is it makes it so that the name coming in is set to the name inside of the class. So this name, this class's name, or this object. All right, now I want to get the name out. I use a getter. And so I'll have this. So get name. And I will just return name. Now I could use this dash rather than so arrow name if I want, or I can just do name because there's no there's no ambiguity here. It's pretty clear. But for a good practice, you should probably always use this when you want to indicate which one is being returned. All right. So next I'm going to set the value. Now this could be done with getters and setters, but I'm going to go ahead and make this one public just so you can see the difference. So I'll move that out of there and put the value down here. Now in my function, in my main function where I create everything, I'm going to go ahead and create two copies. I'm going to create one that's an actual class object and one that's going to be a pointer to a class object. So I will have this coin and I'll call this one a penny and that's it. It's created. Now I've got another coin and I'm going to use a star for pointer and I'll call this one dime. And I'm going to set it equal to a new coin. So now they're both been created. And then we can see the difference in how we talk to each one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and set the names with these. So my penny, I can use the dot and set name and I pass a string penny in capital so you can see it's a little bit different than the variable name and I'm going to go ahead and set the value as well so penny and value equals one all right now I'm going to go ahead and set the value of the dime so dime because I can't use it directly like this, that name, because it isn't really, well, directly there, it's just a pointer, I have to use the arrow notation that you use with other um, structs and other objects like that. And then for the value, I do dime and arrow notation, notation, notation again, and value is set to 
if I want to get the values out, I can use the getter or directly using the variable as well for the value. So I will go ahead and set this one right here. So penny get name to get the value out. And I actually let's get the value also. Penny value. And maybe put a space between them. And do the same thing with the dime. For this one, we are going to have to use arrow notation. Dime. Arrow get name. And dime arrow value. So I hope that helps in seeing how to talk to these classes. I'll go ahead and run it now. And run it, and you can see penny one, dime ten. Now, if I were to try something else like uh, get my name directly, so penny name equals something, it doesn't work because it can't see it because this is a private member and you cannot address it directly. You can only address public members. And the same thing, if I would have put the function or the method call inside of the private section, it would have been unaccessible. You couldn't have used it. So this is your basic introduction to making classes.